We don't know if this is the bottom at all. We have no idea. We'll get to that in a second. But bad news finally, right, got embraced. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Axis of Trader.com uh, Weekend Update Show. Happy uh, Memorial Day. It is Sunday, uh, 10.45 a.m., right? 10.45 a.m., right. Um, after this, first barbecue of the day, going to my buddy's house. Hopefully won't hit any traffic. And this is what life is all about, spending time with people you care about, uh, all about memories and all about decompressing the mind, the body, the soul, uh, and making sure, again, you just learn how to smile uh, every single day. So let's talk about the tape. Hopefully everybody uh, has a great weekend. Tomorrow the U.S. markets are closed, so I'll see everybody back on Tuesday. Um, so let's talk about the market. So once the first day, right, if you guys remember, I mean, this is going back five months. Five months ago, um, I, I the first update that we closed below the 50-day moving average, um, I made a video, and the video basically said, "Hey, the different you know fundamental analysis is very very important if you're an investor, but you need that uh, technical view uh, to enter positions correctly." And you know, and you get and, and honestly, obviously, if you if you started trading the first last you know couple of years, only thing you knew was buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, and you know you got a lot of feedback of what's the difference if you know Amazon is at 3,200 right now, what's the difference that it came back from 3,400? It's going to go back, and this was five months ago. And my my response to that, the counter argument with that is, yeah, all companies that are great are going to continue to stay great macro, but as long as there is supply, right, and that's the most important part in any industry. If you have more supply than demand, things are going to go south, and that's exactly what happened for about five months. And the point was, you could buy a great company, but buy it technically. You don't need to hurry up and buy a great company. You don't need to guess where it's going to be emotionally. Uh, six years from now, 10 years from now, three weeks from now, wait till, till, till at least it confirms macro back to the upside and you could get into the trade. So anybody who bought stock on that first dip below the 50 day moving average, and we know how important that was, well, five months later, uh, five months later, we're talking about, well, we're five months underneath supply. And it's, again, that's it's a really it's a really good view of technical trading versus fundamental trading. Again, if you love Amazon at thirty two hundred because it just came back from thirty five hundred, but it's an underneath supply, there's a high probability at some point, unless the market reclaims supply right away, it's going to go lower. It's going to go lower. It's going to lower. And this is the first series that I think brand new traders have started in the last couple of years have finally realized that stocks underneath supply will go lower. Okay, the longer we sit below supply and put in a base below supply, the higher probability that your stock, no matter how great you think it is and how great it is on the surface, it's going to come lower, it's gonna come lower. And the, the, the moral of this story, this part of the story is, as long as you love the company and just wait for it to commit technically back to the upside, then you have a higher probability of the stock moving higher. Same company, same time horizon, right, that you had when it lost supply, but now at least you have a technical fighting chance, and that's where we are today, right? That's where we are today. But again, we're, if you guys remember the video I record, usually I don't take, uh, I usually take Thursday nights off, but Wednesday, uh, my daughter had a, what does she have, a softball game, soccer game, one of these games. So I recorded a video on Thursday, and Thursday was literally the first day, literally the first day that we were bullish, not because we felt like, oh, this is it, this is the bottom of the market, this is the generational lows, the market gave you market gave you signals, and that was the whole point. The first, This is the first close above the five and the 10 day moving average, right? It's again, technical analysis versus emotional opinion of where you think the stock is gonna go. But this week was really aggressive, right? Especially Thursday uh, going into Friday session. I don't think we have to review Friday session. I think anybody, who traded Friday kind of knows what happened, right? Uh, any tech stock that you bought above the previous day's range, whether it was Nvidia, Tesla, Amazon, anything, okay? There wasn't a down tick for like five hours. It really wasn't. So anybody who traded Friday, it's done, is done. We'll talk about uh, the ramifications, what happens next. But it was finally a series, and I'm gonna use the word finally a lot. It was finally a series of events that led up to Thursday nights reclaim 
and Friday's close. And that was very, very important. Here's the cases in point. We finally, right, finally broke two weeks, or excuse me, two months worth of selling. That's a big deal. Again, that could have been all avoided if you watched the 50-day moving average first time on the close. We were sell buys pretty much every day. Even the days that were up in this whole channel, we I, I kind of left those days alone. Those are either inside days or the days that the channels were just running up on one candle in the last hour, 40 minutes of the day. I didn't care about those days. And what usually happened is they rolled over the next day because they, because they got stuffed into supplies. We talked about uh, what, we, what we needed to see kind of a roundabout slowly but surely bottom. We finally, right, got sellers to be tired. Okay, sellers just like buyers eventually get tired. You could only sell stock for that much longer to finally come realize that, hey, maybe this stock is way too much linear down. Uh, this stock is way down, way down to the point to reassess, right, really reassess its average true range. And once we started seeing the average true range started to shrink, you kind of started seeing a little bit of a clue that sellers start finally starting to get tired right around here. That's, that was the day we reclaimed the five and got rejected off the 10. So it was very, it was very, very important. We talked about this for months. What do we need to see also for this kind of slowly but surely roundabout bottom to start maybe taking place? And again, we don't know if this is the bottom at all. We have no idea. We'll get to that in a second. But bad news finally, right, got embraced. What you saw was a slew of retail earnings. Most of them got absolutely destroyed this quarter. Walmart, Kohl's, Target got absolutely annihilated. But finally, right, bad news was starting to get embraced. You saw Costco come out with news. The market really didn't uh, react. You saw, uh, you know, you saw names uh, like uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, stuff like that. They just didn't really respond. It, it, the, the sellers were almost numb to them. Again, finally, bad news, the same bad news that were taking down these stocks 25% just a week ago was starting to gas out a little bit. Again, sellers were on strike or they were just running out of, uh, they were just running out of ammunition. But the most important part of what we saw in the week, and, and there was some staggering numbers, and these staggering numbers was, were literally in the last two days, right? Maybe the last three days. You saw 6% moves uh, on all the indexes, okay? Including uh, the NASDAQ that put up a six, almost a 7% uh, gain for the week. Now, if you look at the at the tally year to date, the Nasdaq is still down 22%, which is a mind boggling considering they made back 7% in one day, but that's a good thing. And I'll explain to you uh, why in a second. So that was very, very important. But most important part, at least for me, right? Going in from going in from uh, that Wednesday session into Thursday, that Thursday session into Friday, you're finally, right? Finally, able to be comfortable looking at stocks from the long side because of all the things that we just talked about and not really fearing that every down tick is going to pull you know amazon down 27 dollars on one tick of the futures so that was really important but this is the most important part and this is why we don't have to go rid of you know we don't have to go into the individual trades blah 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 it's all we know we happen you know for all you guys congratulations phenomenal moves on friday the video went nuts amazon went nuts tesla uh, from the overnight which is absolutely nuts but here's the most important part right people talk about pattern recognition right you hear that a lot on social media you hear pattern recognition i i think patterns eventually uh get nullified because of the program trading and like the black boxes the gray boxes the algorithms they kind of get smart to it and they start putting on their positions maybe against uh against the retail public at certain areas but i believe in event recognition and pattern recognition again you can make a whole argument that there's a you know, there's a place for it, but I believe in event. I believe, believe in interval uh, recognition. And if you look at the chart, right? And here's the whole, here's our whole five month uh, decline, right? Starting from the first day on January the 5th that we lost the 50 day moving average, right? Everybody see this candle, right? So this started a series of events for at least for the first three months that we were really moving lower, right? So look what happened. I just I want to I want to show you guys this, and this is why sometimes the eyeball test is one of the most effective technical tools you can use, right? So we lost the 50-day moving average, and we we declined basically for the next three months. And look what happened here, right, guys? Everybody see this this brown line, right? This is the first time we closed above this brown line. Okay, that brown line is the 20-day moving average, and in the process, right here, there's two little candles. They reclaimed the five. 
the 10 day moving average and this is the first close over the 20 day moving average and look what happened in the next three weeks right we had a pretty big rally challenging the 50 reclaiming the 50 and moving back into supply everybody see that so the sequence of events right not pattern recognition because there's nothing about a pattern here all it was is a sequence of events 5 10 reclaim 20 reclaim which was super duper important and which led to a three-week decline now what happens next right they ultimately get stuffed into supply they lose the 50-day moving average and look what happens in the last right in the last two months the last two months we sell off again and look what happens look at the similarities right guys right five ten day reclaim right five ten day reclaim 20 day close above the 20 day moving average 20 day move above the 20 day moving average right it's a sequence of events it's not a pattern it's a sequence of events now look what happens look where we are right guys look where we are if you've been uh if you've been with us you know i've been hosting the webinar for over 12 years if you've been trading pivots with us for a very very long time uh, and you just know the most basic parts of the PS60 theory. And we talk about this on a nightly basis because, again, this is kind of what technical analysis is all about. You understand that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, right? We've kind of demonstrated that for years and years and years. So if you look at here, right, and this is the whole eyeball test, this is the first reclaim of supply. So the next measured potential of supply was the 50-day moving average, right? There was nothing from here. To all the way here so the nasdaq had a move from the on the queues from 340 all the way to 352 right 352 initially they rested the next day and they continued the following now check this out if you believe the theory right supply to supply we just reclaimed that 302 remember if you go back to one video just watch the video on 302 we talked about the significance how important that 302 303 close was right it was just the, the previous video right before this one right thursday night it, it, we, we talked about that technical analysis is not subjective. It's not opinionated. It's either going to reclaim that level and move, push forward, or it's going to get rejected at that level and get stuffed and move roll back over. And Friday, we did exactly that. We reclaimed the 20-day moving average just the way we reclaimed it right over here on 315 that started a three-week rally. We reclaimed the 20-day moving average right here at 302, closed at the highs of the day, and look where the next supply zone is and this is where if you're a bull yeah it's kind of cool now right you got 302 plus on the close we close roughly at what 309 so we have room to the next supply zone almost at 320 on the queues guys that's my point of the whole video look at this look how much airspace we have now is it a possibility we gap up Remember, we always play devil's advocate like we always do because, again, we're not naive. We're not bulls. We're not bears. We're realists. We comply, we comply our, uh, and apply, right? We apply all our thinking and sentiment, everything in between on the collection of data, data points all over the place. So if you believe in all this and we finally close and it's the same sequence of events, I go, is it possible to have another two, three week rally? Look, of course it's possible. But I like to take everything day by day, right? Uh, day by day, I reevaluate. Uh, so, for example, if we have any type of weakness in the morning on Tuesday, right, and they don't sell off the market after that, after the opening range print, you know it's a res day that we're probably going to start pushing higher. But if everything goes right, and if everything goes okay, and again, I, I like to, like I said, I like to play everything on a day to day basis and then reassess for the next day. But from the eye test alone, if everything goes well, I think there's a shot we can get a you know another you know multi-day if not week rally into the next supply zone at 320. Now, if we have a crappy day on Tuesday and something happens and we lose 302 on the close, then we're going to roll over very very quickly because again, it's 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 all about technical analysis. So any close continue to build above 302, which were seven points above that, that we discussed on Thursday night's video, is super bullish with a high probability of a measured potential move into the 320 area on the queues. Any close below that, obviously we go back to uh, sell bias mode. So sometimes, you know, technical analysis, especially for new traders, can be very, very tricky. Okay, there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of sentiment, but with all these things that we talked about that finally, right, that finally happened, uh, and you see where we finally closed above the 302 area, 
uh, that's going to replicate the series of events that started on 315, that if you're a bull, you can have a pretty good high probability test that if everything works out correctly, I think we could rally at least for the next few days to start off the week, if not the whole week itself. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not going to you know sit here for two hours to try to bombard you uh, with more data, but the most important part is see what happens next. Ob observe the data. Like I've been saying for years and years and years, there's no such thing as bulls. There's no such thing as bears. When I was sell bias for the last you know pretty much five months, it's because of technical analysis. It wasn't my opinion. I didn't want the market to go down. I, I understand how you know emotions rise and people are in bad moods. I get that, but it's all about where the market is, not where you, where the market wants. So let me give you guys some. Uh, ideas going into um, Tuesday's session. It's all tech heavy, uh, for the exception of Disney. I kind of like Disney as well. Look at Disney, right? First close over the 20. It's mirroring uh, It's mirroring the spies, right? It's mirroring the spies. And by the way, spies has room initially that for, you know, 419, 420 area. You can see the same thing. You see how the spies close over the 20 on Friday? So they're kind of one day ahead of us, right? So the spies are moving up. That's kind of the whole point of the NASDAQ, first close over the 20. Um, so I like Disney. Um, I like Disney over the 20 confirmation uh, above that 109 and a half, 110 area has room to 15, 18 if the market continues to go. Uh, Nvidia completely uh, engulfed, uh, completely engulfed their earnings again. Remember first close over the 20 on Thursday, right? Another 10 points on Friday. Uh, Apple, if it can get above this whole channel, all these charts are going to look exactly the same, guys. If you notice, every chart is above the 20 day moving average. So if Apple gets above this whole range here, there's what, five, six points on, on a potential move. Um, I like Adobe coming in through the bottom. Adobe actually reclaimed the 50 day moving average, which was super, super bullish. And again, it's not really a rock star setup just because if you look at, if you look at, uh, excuse me, it's not really a rock star, um, a rock star kind of uh, annotation of what Adobe's done, but it's gone sideways for such a long time it kind of turned into a premium setup here. So if you look at the weekly chart, right, it finally reclaimed this whole area on the weekly chart. So if it could just confirm the 50 day average tomorrow, man, you got another 20, 25 points in the trade. Obviously the other, other stocks that we, we always watch. Uh, Tesla, I think needs one more day to get out of this channel to start moving uh, potentially into, you know, the, into the eights. Um, I like Square, right? Look at Square. There's so many guys. If you go through charts this weekend, you're gonna see a million charts. You, you, you can literally put a million charts. Um, I just put the names that I wanna watch. I trade all the time. Um, I don't have to guess what their measure potential is. I know the way they're gonna move. And the most important part is to feel comfortable in your own skin. So that's it, guys. Let's hope for the best. Uh, if you are a bull, hopefully this is a good window for you to take back uh, control, but it's something again, uh, just to put for the future, right? So if you ever see uh, and you just have a learning lesson to what happens next. So when you have stocks reclaiming supply, that's bullish. When you have, uh, and, and that's risk on, you're getting a little more aggressive, maybe with, with your tier size, uh, with maybe multiple days. When you see your stock, for example, lose supply and start closing below macro levels to the downside, again, that's not, a, it's not a gift to buy stock on, on the dip. Let it dip, right? Let it dip until it confirms uh, back again. Again, and again, I love Kathy Wood. I think she's a genius. But all she had to do, realistically, and I've been saying this now for a while, all she had to do is hire a kid out of college, pay the kid 50 grand a year, and be like, hey, Miss Woods, you realize, I, I realize you're a genius, I get it. But boy, oh boy, you're buying stocks wrong. You know, they're, they're not cheap because they keep on going down. They're cheap because they're technically not reclaiming back levels. And sometimes it's just as simple thinking as that. Guys, have a great day. Have an awesome Memorial Day. Go get your rest. Go get your hamburgers. Go get your beer, whatever your drug of choice is, allegedly. And the most important thing is be happy. Guys, God bless. Memorial Day. God bless. I'll see you all on Tuesday.